Hello everyone, this is Jaren from marineandreef.com. Today we're going to do a video all about coral fragging. Now, if you're a new aquarist, you may be asking yourself, what's coral fragging? Why would I want to do that? Well, coral fragging is actually quite simple. It's just a short word for coral fragmenting or coral fragmentation. So when we have a successful reef aquarium, the corals in that aquarium are gonna grow bigger and bigger and bigger. They're eventually gonna grow so big, they start bumping into each other, shading out other corals, bunching into the walls. And when they do that, we need to prune them back and that process is called coral fragging. It's where we get those corals, trim them back. And one awesome thing about corals is when we trim back those corals, the portions that we have fragged off can then regrow into new corals and we can use those little pieces to trade with friends, give away, or put into new aquariums. So without further ado, we're gonna frag up three different corals today, an LPS coral, an SPS coral, and a soft coral, and show you a few different ways that you can frag them up. All right, everyone, I know you've been wondering why we're in the warehouse, and that's because coral fragging can be a bit messy, but thankfully the first coral we're here to frag up is a pretty easy one. This is a frog spawn coral or a euphilia coral. It'd be very similar to a hammer coral or, or many other similar corals. You may see them called octospawns. And what's nice about this coral is this coral has a bony structure and it's very thin. This makes it relatively easy to fragment off. Now, what we're gonna use to frag it up are gonna be these uh, bone cutters, which are very useful for this process. One of the best things about these bone cutters is you can use them underwater in your main display tank. It's a little bit hard to show you that, so we're gonna do it out of the water here today. We're simply gonna grab the coral, and we can see it has this branchy structure, all these different little branches here, and we're gonna clip it. So I'm gonna put the clippers at the base here, and we're just gonna crunch down. We dropped it back in, and now we have another small portion. Again, this could keep the coral from bouncing into walls, from stinging other corals, and then we could take the new portion that we've gathered and um, trade that with friends or move it to a new aquarium. Um, and that's really about it. With corals like this, there's enough bony structure, you can very easily frag them up. One important thing to note about LPS corals, like this frog spawn, is whenever you cut a coral when you're coral fragging, you wanna make sure each portion you cut has a polyp or mouth on it. So for this frog spawn, it's very obvious, each tip of those branches have a polyp, that's good. But for some corals like scolemia or incanthophilia that are single big mouths or button corals they call them, you really can't frag those up. If you do, you're going to cut the mouth in half and likely both portions will die. You want to make sure that each portion you cut has one mouth on it. All right, everyone, now to move on to the next coral. This coral I have here is a Montipora coral, and it can be very representative of a lot of SPS corals or small polyp stony corals. So these corals are pretty much completely bony. And for this, I find it easiest to use a saw. Now there are some very expensive saws just for coral fragging. And those are great if you have a little coral farm or a huge aquarium. But a more realistic approach for a lot of people is to use a Dremel like I have here or other rotary tool and a diamond bit. Um, these diamond bits can be purchased at any hardware store um, or online and they're for cutting through stone or tile. And they're also great for cutting through corals as well. So whenever you're using this, the first thing I'm gonna recommend is you wanna make sure you use eyewear. Having had many little flecks of rock get me in the eye, I'll tell you this is very important to have protective eyewear on. And then we're gonna pull the coral out and cut it up. Now we could use something like the bone cutters for a coral like this, particularly if we didn't wanna remove it from the water. Um, it's much easier to use these underwater. However, I find when you use bone cutters in a coral like this, it can tend to crumble a little bit. So if we want a very nice shaped piece, it's going to be easier with the saw. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the coral and turn the saw on. We're just going to make a, a straight line. into the water and I drop the remaining coral piece back in. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue this piece onto a frag plug. So with the a frog spawn coral we did earlier, it 
came with a bony piece in the bottom. It's very easy to wedge into the aquarium as far as gluing it down. But oftentimes with these stony corals, it can be hard to place them. And especially if you're planning on um, trading them with people, it's good to have something to glue them down to. So here I have a frag plug. This is one of the eShops frag plugs. I really like these because they're clear acrylic. Um, and this means that they're just gonna blend in with your rock work a bit better than something that's bright white or a crazy color. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the uh, Two Little Fishies Corifix glue. Now, the way I like to use this is I like to apply the glue to the plug first, dry. And I personally like to use a pretty generous amount because I hate having to go back later and redo it. Um, so we're gonna apply that glue. And one of the interesting things about coral glue is it actually dries faster underwater than out of the water. So we're gonna take our coral piece, just gonna squish it down, gonna hold it underwater. Now generally this glue will mostly harden in a matter of seconds. Um, when I put it back in the aquarium, I typically like to put it in a low flow area, that way it's not being blown around a whole lot. You may put it on a frag rack in a corner, or a CPR makes some excellent frag racks that actually go inside the refugiums to block it from flow. And once you set the coral back down, it should harden in a few hours to completely solid. Um, you then can go ahead and let the coral regrow onto that plug and trade it with friends or move it to a different aquarium. All right, now on to our last coral, which is gonna be these paleothoas. Now for any kind of paleothoa or zoanthid coral, they're commonly known as button polyps or other kinds of polyps, sometimes just zoas or zoos, there's something very important to keep in mind of, and that's that many of these corals have a toxin in them known as paleotoxin. Now paleotoxin is a very strong toxin that can actually make you very sick or possibly even worse. So when we're dealing with these corals, we want to be extra careful. Now I don't want to make you too afraid. The key thing with paleotoxin is it can't hurt you unless it gets in your bloodstream. So in order to protect against that, we're going to start out by using gloves. This is in case we have any small cuts on our hands as we handle the coral. We don't want those cuts getting any of the toxin from the coral slime um, in them. And we also are going to wind up using eyewear. And the last thing is you do want to keep your mouth shut. I know many people who have got a mouthful of it and it not only tastes bad, it actually makes you feel bad. But as long as you take all these precautions, there's no need to worry about fragging up zoanthids or paleothoa. Now zoanthids and paleothoa are a completely soft coral. They have no bone, unlike the last two corals that we fragged. But the easiest way to frag them up is gonna to be to cut a little bit of the rock off that is below the coral. That way we can use this rock either glued onto a plug or generally because it has a little bit of piece of rock on it, I kind of just leave it and put that rock back into the tank. So I'm going to pull this out. We're going to use the saw like we did before. And it's a bit too big for something like the clippers and see if we can get a portion off as a frag. All right. Here's our paleothoa rock. Looks like there's a few small pieces on here. May be able to cut off. I have sped up the saw even more now. Try to get a little bit more power through it. I'm gonna come down through here. Now in this case, I'm actually gonna cut a little bit of where the coral flesh is to try to get that one polyp off. And this is where you need to be careful because that's when the toxin can come out. Turn off so I can speak to you guys. Looks like this is almost off. I'll flip it around a bit more here. Let's see if we can come at it this way. All right, now I think I may be able to just pop it off there. So there we got, we got one polyp on a little bit of a rock. So we could just place this rock back in the tank by itself, or we can go ahead and glue it onto a frag plug and then move that frag plug in. We're gonna return both pieces back to the water. Flip it because the coral on this end. And then we can return them to the tank. 
If you like what you saw in this video and you have any other questions about coral fragging or other aquarium related topics, please visit the videos and education section on marineandreef.com and we hope to see you soon.